Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, I'm doing some IKEA basket hacks. I came across these French country style baskets on a recent trip to IKEA. I will be sure to link the video of that trip. And I immediately thought that these could be customized to suit a farmhouse home, any sort of home really with just a few little upgrades. This is the name of the basket if you would like to try and grab some for yourself. For our first basket, I thought that I would create a liner to go in the inside. So right now I have a piece of drop cloth underneath the basket and I'm just working out exactly how much of the drop cloth I'm going to need. You could definitely do this in a more technical way. You could do all your measurements, but I am all about doing what's a little bit easier with the least amount of equipment possible. So I've just worked out how much I need by laying the basket on top of the fabric and now I'm trimming out a square of that drop cloth. Once I have the basket in place, I'm just going to do another quick check to make sure that I'm happy with the sizing. I noticed on the left there that I did have that seam and I wanted each side to look the same. So I did end up tearing off that seam. I do like to keep these and we will be using them a little bit later on. And then I'm using a lead pencil to draw some little lines to mark out exactly how wide the basket is so that I can cut it to shape. Right now I'm making a cut cut to one of those lines there on the right hand side. I'm going to repeat the same process on the left hand side as well and these cuts are just going to be a guide to make sure that I don't cut too far in. I'll also be doing the same sort of cuts on the opposite side. So this is going to be a no sew basket. Here you can see I am cutting off the squares on the outer corner. So it's almost like the net shape of a cube, obviously excluding the top section. So I'm just gonna cut out those little squares on the side and then this will be something that can just sit inside the basket. And of course you could create your own and you could sew them together, but I'm going for a no sew option here so that we have an easy option that you can do in about an hour. So I'm just checking that I'm happy with how that's sitting. And once I've done that, I am going to take out my iron and iron out as much of these creases as I can. These baskets already have a bit of a country feel, but I wanna add some detail to this drop cloth. So I'm taking IOD's La Campagne stamp. These little roses are from that stamp pack. I'm inking it up with IOD's permanent black ink. And then I'm gonna go around the edges and make sure that I tidy up any excess ink because obviously we do press down a little bit harder when we're stamping fabric. So I wanna make sure that I don't have any excess ink where I don't want it. I'm then positioning where I want it to go and pressing down. You definitely want to use a bit more force when you're pressing down and stamping on fabric and always have one hand in place while the other hand applies pressure. And I'm just going to continue to repeat that process, inking up my stamp and then spreading out that design on our drop cloth. It will be up to you and the look you're trying to achieve as to how many repeats of this sort of design that you do. Maybe you don't wanna do flowers, maybe you wanna do something completely different. This is just one example of how you can customize that fabric to go into your basket. I also took another section from the La Campaign stamp. This is sort of like a bud stamp. So I'm just inking that up, tidying up the excess ink, and then I'm going around and adding that in some of that other negative space. Now this is just going to be a decor piece, so I'm not going to heat set it, but if you wanted to be able to wash this liner, you would let this dry for at least 24 hours and then you would come in with an iron on a cotton setting and use that over the top to heat set your design. Once my ink's completely dry, I'm going to position my basket liner inside the basket and I'm just going to press down and get each of the sides in position. Remember, I don't mind if this is a little bit shabby chic looking. I'm going to fold some of that drop cloth underneath and then I am going to actually be using a hot glue gun to glue those sides down. This is going to give our basket liner a bit more of a tidy look. Again, you could definitely 
definitely do some sewing with this if you didn't want to use hot glue. And I'm going to go around the edges of the liner and continue gluing down those sections until they've all got a nice tidy hem. Partway through doing this step, I decided that I wanted to add some little ties to each of the corners to tie the different sections together. In hindsight, I probably should have decided this earlier so that I could glue the ties down underneath the hem that I'm currently gluing, but projects evolve as you are working on them. So hindsight definitely would have glued the ties underneath the hem, but that's okay. We are going to go ahead and cut the off cuts that I took from the edge the hems that were around the border that I tore off. I'm going to cut those to size and then I'm going to glue those on the edges of each of our sides. So there's going to be a tie in each corner so that we can tie those different sections together. Again, I definitely would have glued these underneath the hem, but I will just remember this for next time. You're not going to be able to see this anyway once it's folded over. Obviously by using drop cloth and these little hemmed sides that I tore off, I'm going for more of a rustic sort of shabby look. If you wanted this to be a bit more tidy, you could use some lovely ribbon or lace for your ties instead. To finish this basket off, I'm now going around and in each of the corners, I'm going to tie a simple bow. And here's our finished lined basket. I'm really happy with how this turned out. That no sew liner has definitely transformed what was a generic Ikea basket into something with a lot of charm. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. For my next basket, I'm going to be using these little feet that I bought online. I will link them in the comments. And I'm just going to be using my hot glue gun to glue them to the base of the basket. This was a little bit tricky at times and I definitely had to have some patience and sort of work them to fit the basket. And I did at each stage stop and make sure that it was going to keep the basket straight and level. But this definitely takes the basket up a notch. It gives it a little bit more refinement I think. These are originally I believe to be used on jewelry boxes but I just love how this elevates the look. I'm then going to be adding this handle that I also bought online and it has a screw that goes into the back. I'm going to add a washer to that but first I'm going to drill a hole. There was a section in the basket where I wanted it to go but it was just a little bit too tight for that screw so I'm using a drill bit to make the section a little bit wider and then I'm using my drill to screw that uh, little screw in place so that it can go into the back of the handle. So I definitely had to be patient with this, but I wanted to make sure that it was securely in place. And here's our second finished basket. This was a quick and easy upgrade hack, adding those feet and that handle definitely gave this a more customized, refined look. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. For my third basket, I'm going to be using the labels one and two molds by IOD. These are retired designs and I'm going to be using my amazing casting resin. I'm measuring out equal parts A and B and then stirring it together for about 30 seconds. I wasn't exactly sure which label I wanted to use, so I narrowed it down to three and decided to pour some resin in each of them. As I'm going to be sticking one of these labels to the basket, I went with resin as it has a lot more stability. 
After about 10 minutes, my molds are ready. So I'm going to flex my mold and then pull the casting out. And I'm just going to lay them up against the basket one at a time to work out which design I want to go with. I did try to freeze the video at each of those points so that you would get some idea of how each of these would look, just in case you wanna try this at home. In the end, I went with the more rounded design and I'm going to be coming in with Dixie Belle's Buttercream Chalk Mineral Paint and I'm going to give my label two coats. I went with white here. I'm going to be giving it a little bit of an antiqued look, but at this point you could come in with a bit more color if you're someone who prefers a bit more color in your decor. Once that was dry, I took Paint Couture's Van Dyke Brown Glaze and I'm just adding it directly to the paint. It's not sealed, but that's okay because I am working pretty quickly here and on quite a small surface. So I'm going in really working that glaze into all of the beautiful details on that label. And then once I have that covered, I'm taking taking a wet wipe and I'm coming in and wiping back that excess so that the glaze sits down in the details and gives this a real antique look. I'm then taking Paint Couture's Bronze Luxe Metallic and I'm going to go in and hit some of those details with that gorgeous bronze color. And again, when using these lovely metallics, keep in mind that they do become more vibrant as they dry. This bronze is probably one of my all-time favorites out of these metallics, but if you prefer gold or silver at this point, you could come in with those colors to really customize this look. Once my paint was completely dry, I took IOD's Knob Topper Stamps. This is a retired design too, unfortunately. And I'm just laying the stamps over the top of my label to work out which one of them might be suitable for our design. I wanted to keep it pretty simple, so I did end up deciding on this little B, but I don't want the whole design. So I'm going to first ink up the entire stamp, and then I'm going to take a wet wipe and I'm going to wipe off any areas that I don't want that ink. We only want that little B. So I'm just wiping off every other section. I am not going to be using any sort of backer on this because I need to be able to come in now and press that stamp right into the label. And it is a little bit recessed. So I needed to have that flexibility. And when I am ready, I will pull that stamp straight up. As I'm going to be applying this to an uneven surface, I'm using my hairdryer to heat up the resin label first so that it becomes a little bit flexible. And then I'm going to use some hot glue on the back so that we can attach it to the basket. If I ever wanna take this off, I'll just have to heat that glue up again and I can replace the label. And here's how our third basket turned out. This was a quick and easy update, but definitely something that you could customize to suit your taste. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. I really hope that you enjoyed today's video and that it's given you some ideas on how you can customize those generic baskets that you can find at Ikea to suit your home and your style. Let me know if you had a favorite basket from today. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment and share it out. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find the products used today on our website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.